Praise the Lord, everyone. If we could all just stand to our feet for the next 30 seconds and lift our hands and lift our voices unto the Lord. Come on, let's take a moment of prayer. Lord Jesus, God, we've come to worship and praise your name today. Come on, let's lift our voices unto the Lord. He wants to meet us in this place today. In Jesus' name, come on, let's seek the Lord. Lord Jesus, we love you. God, I thank you, Lord, for your love and kindness. Have your way in this place. Come on, lift your voices unto the Lord. Come on, why don't we continue in that for just a moment? Come on, why don't you lift your hands all across this house? Come on, we've seen a great move of God over this past weekend, but I believe in God's going to do something greater in this room today. Come on, lift your hands, lift your voice all across this room. God, we love you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for this great day. And God, we're asking right now that there would be a great move of your presence. God, I'm praying that your glory would be made manifest in this room. And God, I'm asking that there would be a, a mighty demonstration of your power and your authority. And God, I'm asking right now that you'd anoint the praise team as they sing. God, anoint the preached word as it's brought forth. And God, I pray that you'd anoint the remainder of this service. God, we love you and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. If you need a touch from God today, I encourage you, find a minister, find an elder. They'll anoint you with oil and they'll pray with you. And I believe in God's going to do something great today. Amen. Amen. Let's worship together with the praise team as they sing. Thank you. 
some miracle worker. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. He's still working. He is a miracle worker. And when you cannot see it, ask for that faith that says, let me see what you're doing, Jesus. Let me see what you're working, Jesus. Ask that your faith will grow because he's a way maker today. the same. 
I feel so strongly that he's here. I feel like the moment we began to worship, he flooded this place. There's something he wants to do today. There's miracles he wants to perform today. We just came off of a fantastic conference and he was moving, but he is not done yet. Whatever you came in with this morning, he wants to do a miracle. He is here right now. You are at the throne room. Hallelujah.
his gates with thanksgiving, but enter into his courts with praise. Come on, we, we got all the time we need. Why don't we just take a few more moments just to enter into that throne room? Come on, somebody lift up a praise right now. Come on, somebody lift up a praise that he's worthy of. Come on, you're standing on holy ground right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you love what you feel today? Amen. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Amen. Looking forward to what the Lord has in store for us for the rest of this service. But if you could make your way back to your seat as you're preparing your offering, we just have a couple quick announcements to go over. If you're a guest today, please make sure you stop by the greeter's desk on your way out. We have a gift we would like to give you to show our appreciation for joining us in service today. Amen. There will be no youth service this Friday. I repeat, there will be no youth service this Friday. 
Um, May 12th and 13th, we are having our Youth P7 Riot Conference with Brother David Ivey. He's going to be bringing forth the word. Amen. Is anybody excited for that? Amen. If anyone would like to donate money to our P7 leaders to help support their efforts in bringing the word of God to our schools, please mark it on a tithe or on a tithe envelope. Amen. Amen. May 18th through the 20th, we are having our Missions America Conference here at Grace Apostolic Church. And I know we have some great, great ministers and leaders lined up to give the word. Amen. Looking forward to what the Lord's going to do then. Amen. Now, is anybody ready to give the Lord, worship the Lord in their giving today? Amen. Amen. If the ushers could make their way, please, if you're a guest, do not feel obligated to give. This is just our way of giving back to what the Lord has richly blessed us with. Amen. Amen. Let's take this offering, the remainder of this service before the Lord in prayer today. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and your mercy. God, we thank you for your sweet presence that's already in this room today. God, I'm asking that you would bless and uh, multiply this offering for the works of your kingdom and your services. And God, I'm asking that you'd anoint the remainder of this service and the preached word today. God, we love you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' wonderful name.
let's give him a good praise right now. Thank you, Lord. Come on, the angels don't stop day and night praising him. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come, the Almighty God, day in and day out. They praise him. Hallelujah. I don't know if this is anything about accompaniment music in their worship of the angels. I don't know if the angels worship as long as the music's playing and then stop, or if they just do it day and night because God's worthy. Amen. Don't, don't let our music be the reason you worship God. Worship God if there's no music playing or if a great choir is singing, but God's worthy. Because from your voice, out of your breath, you worship God. That's, that's what God wants to hear. Come on. That's what God li listens for. He wants to hear the song of the redeemed. He wants to hear the voice of those who were lost and undone. But you got to come to church on a Sunday. And so you'll praise God. If you've got to praise God all by yourself, you'll lift up your voice and magnify the King of kings and the Lord of lords with your voice. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Your voice is powerful. Your voice is powerful. Your praise is powerful. It un un unleashes things in the heavenlies. You can't even see it. You, you don't even know what's happened above your head, but when you give God praise, you shred that air, you shred the devil's face, and you give that glory to God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Now, I'm glad you're here today. I mean, we love our praise team. We love our musicians. Amen. We love what we feel in the house of the Lord. Thank you, praise team. Amen. You may be seated for a few moments of time. So good to see each and every one of you that are here today. So good to have uh, my mom and dad back and my grandma back. She's not here, but got to have them back. Amen. Uh, with us. They've been in, in Florida for, I, I said, if I'm ever going to go to Florida for a time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave in March and come back in May. Because it's March and April, I kind of get sick of the cold, you know, the cold and rain. I'm kind of ready for it to be kind of over with now. But we're, we're, I'm glad that it's kind of lighting up a little bit out there, I think. But I'm glad to be in the house, Lord, today with you all. And hopefully you enjoyed your first class this morning. I know we started our Next Steps class today. And, uh, and, and so hopefully, uh, if you, if you want to know more about, about the Lord, the Bible, the church, go to Next Steps class every Sunday at 10 to 11, and you'll hear a lot of great things. I want those of you that are part of a P7 club, if you're part of a P7 club in your school, would you stand? Would you stand? Awesome. I think they need a hand clap. Just stay standing. Stay standing. I think we're missing uh, Izzy. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. We have five young people here today, part of a club. We're missing Izzy. Do you know that every week, it's every week, these young people meet um, at their school, and uh, they talk about being in, in the enemy territory, okay, in public school. Um, they meet every week, and they bring the gospel to their school every week. Every week, not only are they responsible, which I'm very proud of all these young people, not only are they responsible for bringing the word of God, but they have to bring food along with it, okay, because you know if anyone wins souls, winning souls is not cheap. And it starts with, a lot of it starts with food. Jesus even broke the fish and loaves to say, hey, set them down, I'll feed them, then I'm going to talk to them for a little while. So we know that every week, these families bring food to feed all those mouths. My mom and dad remember what that was all about. I had a bunch of boys around uh, feeding these, these young people that come to, their, come to their group every week. And these families pay for it. The, 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 the least that this church can do is say, you know what? We're not going to put the burden of the cost on these families. These kids already do. I don't want them to worry one day. Whether or not they're gonna have, their family's going to have food enough to, to, to supply for, the, for them when they go to their class, all right? So what I want to do, I want to raise an offering for, for, for our P7 groups, and I want to raise an offering for our, through our families. And so what's going to happen, I'm going to ask uh, 
Brother uh, Anthony, after service, we're going to have, a, we're gonna have a, um, a basket. Me and my wife are going to give $100. We'd like to give $100 to that right now. And I want to make sure that by for the end of the year, how many more, do you guys even know how many weeks you have left of, of P7 clubs? What's that? And then June? We've got a couple months, okay? I want to make it to where there's no, there's no empty, you know, empty mouths. Everyone can be fed and be fed well. And if we'll have enough in escrow. Next year, we'll have money for that as well, okay? So I want families... If you would help us here, uh, end of service, pray about it, think about what you want to give to, to this, because this, this is an awesome cause. Aren't you glad? Every, amen. Proud of your young people. Amen. Amen. It's awesome. Well, we don't, no, no, because I want to preach and get out of the way. We'll have a basket set up, okay? We'll have a basket set up. Just don't forget about the basket, all right? So I'm sure Brother Anthony will make sure we put it right down here in front. We only have one offering. Okay, you guys may be seated. Thank you. We only have one offering for that specifically. And I do want to say also that we are going to, me, uh, I'm taking my son with me and, and, and Brother Art Schnitzer, who we all know, Brother Art. We are going back to Sierra Leone. And uh, that's going to be end of May. We're going to be there for a week. We're going to be dedicating a school there. They have a, they have a, um, uh, a, a beautiful facility, probably the nicest in Sierra Leone. Uh, our, our church, along with Brother, uh, Brother uh, Carpenter and, and Miraville, have come together to, to, to make sure they have nice things. Now, uh, we donated here, uh, one of our saints donated them to have a car, Brother Moses, who's doing a great job. The Holy Ghost is falling. They're baptizing people. Amen. I appreciate the kindness of that. And that being said, we're going to raise an offering for them going towards the end of June. So just think about that if you could each week, if you can, on your envelope. If you want to put it towards Sierra Leone, it's only going to be one offering just for Sierra Leone. We're not doing it for India right now. We got, of course, there's needs all around the world. There's needs all around the world. But we want, I'd like to bring at least, uh, if we can, raise $1,500 to take to Sierra Leone with us. That would buy them a nice, they have, they have crusades. We don't really do crusades, but they have crusades. And, and Pastor Moses, says, Brother Traxel, we, we have crusades and we don't have enough juice in our amplifiers to to get out there to everybody to hear us because we need, we need a bigger generator to get more power. So we want to buy them a generator so they can have these crusades and just uh, make it nice. All right? Amen. So if you can think about that, we're so blessed here in America, and uh, we want to help give that out, right? If you, if, you give, if you give a prophet a glass of water in the prophet's name, you get the prophet's reward. Some of you can't go, but you can give. If you can give towards that and blessing, that would be great. Amen. So today is going to be for our P7 club. Amen. Standing with me for the re reading of the word, going to the book of Acts, chapter 16. Amen. Didn't we have a wonderful time this week? Didn't, didn't the Lord just bless us? Amen. So glad to have a wonderful building where we can celebrate uh, our, our spr spring conference and uh, heard great word from um, Brother Moses and uh, hopefully awakens us, our spirits up to realize we don't have a whole lot of time left. I mean, we've got we've to make our life count here on earth with the time that we have left. Acts chapter 16, verse number 22. And the multitude rose up together against them. This is Paul and Silas they're talking about. As you know, if you know the story, Paul prayed for a young girl. She had a spirit of divination, and he prayed for her, and she no longer could speak in the, you know, using the devil's power. So, uh, of course, her, 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 her master was upset about this, so they weren't happy with this miracle. And so after the miracle, this is the response. Multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison, where it's really dark, and made their feet fast in stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praise unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, everyone say suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. It was midnight, it was dark, their feet were in stocks in the inner prison. Of all the places that you should not want to worship God would be at that point in time. Any place that you ought to have it out. Now I get it. You want to curse at that point in time? I gotta understand the guy, you know, he, I can get why he'd be upset right now. Of any point in time that you would not expect to hear a song is in prison at midnight. And it's so crazy, so strange. We're talking about, we've been on a theme, right? Being strange here. Be strange, hashtag. Stay strange. It was so strange that the Bible says the other prisoners heard them. That's how weird it was. I, 
This is not, they, they heard them singing songs. At that point, I guarantee you, that prison cell had never heard a worship song until these two weirdos come in, right? And they're giving God praise when you shouldn't. And then all of a sudden, we want a suddenly to happen as soon as we get into a mess. Get into a, we, oh God, come right now. I don't want to face sickness. I don't want to face her. I don't want, but we're in it. And then God came suddenly, but it was a response of a song that was sung at midnight. And I want to preach to you a little bit on the subject today, when all you have is a midnight song. When all you have, you don't, it doesn't seem like you have a whole lot going for you. Doesn't seem like there's a whole lot to be excited for. Tomorrow morning doesn't look, looks like another average day or less than average day, but you still have a voice. You still, you still have a God that loves you. You still have a God that hears your prayers. And I don't care where you are in life, if you would just lift up your voice, I'm telling you, there is a suddenly going to happen. And guess what? If not, O king, throw us in the fire. We're still not going to bow. Why? If God never comes through, he's still worthy of my praise. If God never answers a prayer, he's still worthy of my praise today. Amen? Hallelujah. Get that in our heart, oh God. Get that in our spirit, Lord, that you're still worthy of praise regardless of the circumstance I'm in right now. Amen. Everyone say amen. Read the word. Amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord Jesus. Chippy the parakeet never saw it coming. Sister, Sister Foster, close your ears here. It's about a bird. I don't want you to upset you here. <laughs> Chippy the parakeet never saw it coming. One second he was peacefully perched in his, ca in his cage. The next he was sucked in, washed up, and blown over. The problems began when Chippy's owner decided to clean Chippy's cage with a vacuum cleaner. She removed the attachment from the end of the, the hose and stuck it in the cage. The phone rang, and she turned to pick it up. She'd barely said hello when Chippy got sucked in. The bird's owner shrieked, put down the phone, turned off the vacuum, and opened the bag. There was Chippy, still alive, but very stunned. Since the bird was covered with dust and soot, she grabbed him and raced to the bathroom and turned on the faucet and held Chippy under the running water. Realizing that Chippy was soaked and shivering, she did what any compassionate bird owner would do. She grabbed the hair dryer and blasted her pet with the hot air. Poor Chippy never saw what hit him. A couple weeks after the trauma, a friend asked Chippy's owner how the bird was recovering. Well, she replied, Chippy doesn't sing much anymore. He kind of just sits and stares. It's not hard to see why, sucked in, washed up, and blown over, that's enough to steal the song from the stoutest heart. Sometimes life is like that, you know, for us as people. You're minding your own business, getting through another day. Everything seems to go fine, but out of nowhere, you are sucked into a whirlwind of chaos. You receive a negative report. You receive a negative phone call. And life goes from great to uncertain in just a few moments. And to be honest, completely honest, the normal thing to do as a person is respond out of emotion. It's the, you do it without thinking about it. You're an emotional being. The first thing that happens, the emotions get stirred by what you hear. Your brain triggers the emotions because God made us that way. The normal thing to do would be emotional. If you weren't emotional, we'd think you're weird. We'd think you're a sociopath. Don't you have any emotions? Right? Because the, the natural, normal thing is to respond to what you hear out of your emotions. When you read the doctor report... The normal thing is to be angry and upset possibly and to question where is God when we need him most. If he has the power to keep us from this, why are we even going through this mess right now? 
In fact, it's even normal for unseen events to affect our worship. Now, we might get up here and preach, oh, worship past it, worship through it, but yeah, pastor, you're not going through it right now like I am. Don't be upset at me when I've got my arms folded. Now, we talk about, oh, you bump, you know, I can hear Jeff Arnold's voice. You bump on the log, you know, get your arms folded, don't want to worship God, you know. Don't have to, give God praise. And you're like, hey, yeah, I, I get it. I know I should. But you're not going, you're not where I am right now. You don't have the same report looming over your head like I have on mine. And so the natural normal events is to affect our worship. We come to service. We sing our, our song about a God who hears us and a God who heals us when we still aren't healed. So yeah, sometimes our circumstances hinders the effectiveness of what we offer God in our worship. The response of the Israelites seems normal for their circumstance. In Psalm chapter 137, that they are now, the song is recorded in the word of God during a time of their Babylonian captivity. A time when they're brought out of Jerusalem and now their sons and their daughters have been taken captive and uh, some of their, their soldiers have been killed and now they're taken out of their familiar territory, brought into a strange land in Babylon. And the Bible says in 137 of Psalm, this is their response. When they get to the rivers of Babylon, the first thing they do is they sat down and they wept. They wept because of what they're going through. They, they wept when they remembered Zion. Does anybody ever want to cry when you remember peaceful times? You remember life before the storm. You remember life before the situation. You remember how peaceful it was before everything went to chaos in your life. And you weep when you remember what was familiar to you and how life was good. And now you look over it and you just weep over the fact that you're no longer in the same place you used to be. The next thing they do, after they weep, the Bible says they hung up their instruments on the willows. Those lyres and those harps that had brought sweet music to Judah and Jerusalem, the, uh, the thing that David had introduced them to now, they're hanging up their uh, harps on the willows. In other words, what they're saying is they're saying, we are done. I'm done singing. I'm done praising. I'm done with all this. I'm done trying to have church, play church, when I'm, I'm in a strange place. We hang up our instruments, we're done. And then they ask the question, number, uh, the second, the third thing, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And can I tell you from an outsider's perspective, I can tell them, hey, I can understand how you feel that way. I can understand that would be a normal response. In most situations, you want to hang up your harps, you want to hang up your song, you want to hang up your praise, you want to hang up your faith. In normal situations. But as you know, that has not been the theme of the last five messages. Because I'm not talking about living in normalcy. I pre I've been preaching this to my guts, been coming out of my shirt. That you do not serve a normal God. Therefore, what everything the world calls normal, the church says, yeah, but we don't operate like that. Because we don't respond to brokenness like the world does. That would be normal. What we do is strange. When we have brokenness, we lift up our voice and we give God a shout. And we lift up our voice and we give God a praise. What the world says normal, the church says, but we're going to give God praise regardless of where we are. Hallelujah. 
I'm not, I'm not preaching about being normal. I'm not talking about giving a normal response. I'm talking about doing something that the world doesn't get. The world doesn't understand. They're saying, man, you should be upset. You should be done. But there's something within me that says, yes, uh, but my God is still alive. Uh, and he's still on the throne. Uh, so how can I give up when I know uh, that my God is in charge uh, of every event? Uh, that the powers that be uh, are ordained of God. Uh, there's no power that can come against me uh, that my God doesn't already know about. Therefore, I will praise God at midnight when everything seems upside down. They wanted to, they had to ask the question, how in the world those that wasted of us required a song, singing, saying, sing the songs of Zion. Go ahead, Israel. That's what helped you before, right? Go ahead and sing the songs. And they said, how in the world shall we sing a song in a strange land? But could I say, we're not talking about being normal. We're talking about stepping out of faith. I would tell them if ever there was a time that they should have sang the song of Zion, it should have been then. If ever there was a time to release a praise and a song, it should have been at that moment in time. Because I'll tell you, there is nothing like a familiar song in a strange situation. I don't know if any of you have faced darkness so dark that you think all hope has been lost and you're driving down the road and then all of a sudden a song of Zion comes out of your soul. And even though you're in a strange place, a place you've never been before, when that song rolls out of your soul, there is a peace that comes in that car. Come on, somebody knows what I'm talking about. You've been in a dark place, but the Lord never left you without a song. God never left you without a praise. And in your deepest moment, you begin to sing a familiar song at midnight. Come on, you don't have to be all by yourself in a strange land. There is a God that's got a song for you. There is a God that's got power. In a strange place, in worry, in hurt, in despair, I've still got a familiar song I can sing unto God. The power of your praise, the, your, your, your praise shouldn't be predicated on what you're going through when you're praising. Not predicated on what you're going through when you're praising. The power of your praise stands on who you're focusing on when you're praising. It's all about who you're looking at. It's all about where your focus is. And regardless of what I face, I choose to focus on Jesus. I choose to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. Because I understand that my God is the same regardless of what my day looks like. If I wake up in the morning and there's a gleam of sunshine on my face and the kids are already dressed for school, they're right down there waiting for us to get down there, and I'm like, wow. They said, now I packed our own sandwiches, we packed our lunch. If that ever happened... And every day was good. Oh, man, here's a Monday morning. It's already starting out really good. And then all of a sudden, somehow during the day, it went from good to, oh, man, I can't believe I even got out of bed this morning. I can't believe everything seems to go wrong. On days like that, guess what? My God is still worthy to be praised. Not because every day is perfect, but because God is perfect. Therefore, I will will continue to give God praise regardless of my day. Someone want to do that right now? Oh, God, I want to give you a high praise. Lord, I may not feel like it right now. My flesh may be battling me right now. But, God, you're still worthy. 
You're still worthy of the praise regardless of my circumstance. Come on, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. And my praise is not predicated on my circumstance, right? It's my praise. It's lodged in my heart. It's lodged in my soul. It's forever there in my DNA, as Bishop William Parent would say, be in your DNA. When I got the Holy Ghost, God gave me a song. He gave me freedom. In spite of my situations, in my DNA, he put it there. And if we would prioritize, now listen here, if we would prioritize Praise in our heart simply because of who God is, you won't lose praise in spite of your situation. Okay, crickets can chirp all you want, but I'm telling you. If you set praise in your heart as an automatic default for everything you go through, our problem is we lose praise because it's not been set up as a bedrock foundation of who I am. Therefore, when I get the report, the first thing out the window is hope in God. Therefore, if I've already got it set in my mind that God's the same and my praise will be the same, whatever the devil throws at me, my response is always the same. I'm not talking about being a robot. I'm talking about enacting a faith that God has given each one of us. That in spite of the worst storms in life, I can stand as a beacon of hope. Because guess what? Not every, listen, we got a lot of room in this church. Not everybody's here to hear this. So undoubtedly, those of you that are here, you have a responsibility. Because when you go through a storm, you're hearing what I'm saying. I'm going to preset praise in my heart. You've got preset buttons for every song, every station in your car. Why don't you preset a button of, of praise and worship everything that happens. Every morning I'm going to hit the preset button that I'm going to give. Listen, it doesn't matter how my day goes. You can go ahead and put me in prison. You cannot take a preset song. You cannot take my worship. You cannot take my praise. It's who I am. It's what I do. It's how I praise God. Hallelujah. Praise is what I do when I want to get close to you. I'll, I'll leave that for the singers. So here we see in Psalm 137, really, a picture of a bunch of crybabies sucking their thumbs, giving up on life, giving up on God, refusing to sing their song, angry, hurt, despondent, and actually might be a good image of what we look like sometimes. If we'd really be honest and admit it today, that we do get shook sometimes. We do get sidetracked sometimes. We do get blindsided sometimes. And uh, we get kind of despondent with God when our prayers aren't answered in a timely fashion. And when life doesn't roll us out the red carpet like we think it should because we're God's kid. And we deserve that. And we do a lot like the Israelites. We hang up our song. And we say, I'm done singing. What we're really telling God is, I'm done having faith. Because at that point, God, you're only worthy of my praise when everything goes right. But I've, I've come to tell you today that your song, your voice, the last thing you've got left, that praise unto the Lord may be the only thing that's going to get you through this thing. And yes, sometimes you'll have to sing your song at midnight. 
Sometimes you'll have to worship in spite of less than desirable circumstances. It may be midnight, but you're not hopeless because God hears the song at midnight. The God that's with me in green pastures is also the God that walks beside me in the valley of the shadow of death. Yes, it might be day or it might be night, but I will still sing a song unto God. It may be the only thing getting me through this thing. Come on, can we shout unto God right now? Let's shout, oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, with all my breath, I will sing unto God. I will praise God. I will worship God. It might be midnight, but God still deserves the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In good or in bad, in ups or in downs, in the middle of the day or at midnight, I will worship the Lord because he's worthy of my praise. So that was Psalm 137. That was their response. I love, I love Habakkuk, Habakkuk's response. The same similar situation, Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18. The prophet writes, although, everyone say although. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be on the vines. The labor of the olives shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the field, and there shall be no herd in the stall yet. Everyone say yet. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Although there's nothing to worship God for right now. Although my life has gone to pot, my world has turned upside down. There's no no animals in the crib. There's no meat in the field, although those things are stacked against me. Yet I will praise the Lord. Why? Because in spite of all that, God is still worthy to be praised because God is still in control of my life. I looked up this verse, these verses here, and I did a little short study because, you know, preachers do short studies on things to make them sound real smart, right? We just, well, the, the, the Greek says this about this, and, you know, with the history of this. And so I, I said, you know what? I'm going to look up history of these, this, these statements here. And I found out about the rules of grammar. I, I speak real, Russ, I speak real good. Uh, I found out the rules of grammar. This is although, the word although and the word yet are both considered conjunctions, which are words that connect two ideas together. Here's an idea, conjunction, next idea. Bad, but one word can change everything to the next one sentence the next. You have that good old conjunction. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? We know what that is. Can, it, it attracts to some of you, some of you kids are like, what? I have no idea what he's decided. That's it's an 80s thing. So there, there are two Conjunctive words that connect two ideas together. Now, this is interesting. This kind of blew me away here. The word yet in our grammar always follows although. Yet in grammar always follows although. Yet is often used in a negative statement. Yet often is used in a negative statement. So when you have an although in your life, there's always, according to grammar, a yet somewhere in your life. Okay? Yet it's not good. It doesn't look good. Yet. Use a negative term. Yet. Doesn't look the way I want to. Although I had a situation, there's a yet coming somewhere in the rest of the story. Some of you this week are going to possibly face an although. 
Some of you who will wake up tomorrow and you may get a message and it's going to say, although, it's going to be something not good. It's going to be something not great. And when you come across and although I suffer this, there is a yet God that says I'm still alive. I'm still in control. Although you may face that trial, yet God remains sure. Yet God is alive. Yet God is hope. Yet God is in control everything you face yet there is a God what are you facing what are you going through although I'm saying man I'm, I'm, I'm going through this stuff I'm, I'm facing this battle I'm facing this hurt yet I believe in my God there is a yet praise in my soul you can't steal my yet praise you can't take it away from me why because when God when I God filled me with the Holy Ghost he put in me a hope so deep that it's like an anchor to my soul that when storms come and go I am anchored to a yet God that's still alive that's still well that's still sitting on the throne and is still in charge of my life today. I'm going to be closing here in a few minutes. In Acts 16, we read of the unlawful beating and imprisonment of Paul and Silas. On them was put many stripes, and they were cast into the inner prison. What the other prisoners did not know that day is that these two were not common prisoners. They were different. They were a little bit off. They were wearing these Stay Strange t-shirts, you know, coming into the... David had a Stay Strange t-shirt on last week, didn't he? Here come Paul and Silas, part of the Stay, Stay Strange crew, you know, we're going to stay strange for Jesus. And here they come in and they're sitting down with everybody else and... These guys are a little strange, and um, they, they, they were different. How they would respond to their prison predicament would be considered strange to the others around them. But the thing about Paul and Silas was this. Just because their body was imprisoned, their worship wasn't. Just because their body was behind bars doesn't mean their faith was. And the Bible records... At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them singing. Rather than wallowing in self-pity, the two persecuted prisoners prayed and sang, expecting to hear groanings and cursings. The other prisoners instead listened to Paul and Silas praying and singing praises unto God, at midnight. And the Bible says, and suddenly. There's a song we sing. There's a song. Suddenly, earthquakes, you know, suddenly. Something like that. Right? There's a song. Anybody remember that song? Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. There was a supernatural response to a midnight song. The faith of Paul and Silas caused them to praise before the supernatural ever got involved. That's what faith is. I'm all over. That's what faith is. Faith is, I don't see it yet. I don't know where it's going to come from, but I will give God praise regardless. If God never responds, I'm still going to give him praise at midnight. <laughs> These two men were not sucking their thumbs and cursing until God rescued them. They counted him worthy of a midnight song when no rescue was in sight. They had it in their mind. If he does or does not, if he will or will not, my praise is still the same. Listen, hell can put me in prison and throw away the key, but they cannot stop the worship on the inside of my soul. Oh, uh, all hell can break loose, but I've still got a midnight praise. Uh, I'm going to give God. 
Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. The devil can't steal my midnight worship. The devil can't steal my voice. The devil can't steal my breath. Until I die, I have a worship in my heart. And as long as I've got life, you can lock me up. You can do anything you want. But there is a worship inside my heart. I think today there may be a few people. I'm not, maybe not everybody. But maybe a, a couple people in this place that maybe the devil's trying to throw everything he can at you. Maybe you try to throw everything you can at your family and everything in you would say, I want to give up. I want to quit. I want to just give up because I've, I've tried so hard and God hasn't come through yet. And your faith is, is maybe dwindling a little bit in God. And you know, your mind says, I know God can do it. But you struggle with the fact that he hasn't come through for me yet. And those are hard. And, and, and the truth is, Jesus never promised he's going to bring us through it. I love Brother Pete. Sorati, you think I've prayed for Brother Pete, Pete a few times in my life? God, get Brother Pete out of, heal him from multiple sclerosis. He can do it. But during those times, I'll tell you what Brother Pete told me. He says, I've changed since I've had multiple sclerosis. He goes, I was a bad man before. I was arrogant. But the Lord, because of this, I've had to rely on other people. and It's humbled me. And so as a person, I'm a better person now than I was before I had this. Can you believe, how can God do that? How can God take a man like that and, and let him see what the Lord's doing in his life? I tell him, I said, Pete, I believe God can heal you. I said, I said this is the thing. God, Jesus didn't die for your body to be healed. He died for your soul to be saved. And someone's going go to the, go to the grave with multiple sclerosis, and someone's going to live a long 95 years, 96 years, 100 years. But we're all going to go to the ground someday in some form. And faith is, God, If I, however I end up in the ground, however, I want you to know, Lord, that I believe in you to my dying breath. Job said, he knows the way I take. He says, yet in my flesh, he's going to raise me up. One of these days in my flesh, I shall see him. I shall see him for myself. And he may never give me kids again. He may never give me my stuff back. But guess what? I'm still going to trust in him. When my best friend, my wife, told me, don't do it, I said, I will still trust in him. I will still, he's my provider. I will, I will keep my heart in him. And Jesus had to look at Peter, his best friend, and say, Peter, I know this is going to be tough. And, bro, I can't get you out of this. You're going to do something stupid. You're going to want to quit. But Jesus said, I'm not going to pray you out of it, but I'm going to pray that your faith fail not. In other words, Jesus said, I believe in you, Peter. I called you a rock for a reason. I believe in you. But even the strongest among us have to have somebody. I just need someone to pray for my faith. I just need someone to believe in me and says, Lord, I'm struggling, but I, I wonder if anybody has strong faith in this house. Has, any, has anybody been through something, and because you went through something, it's given you strong faith? This is, this is going to be different. This is going to be, this is, we're going to ask some complete honesty here. The, the greatest way to get help is to be honest. Hey, I need some help. I, need some, I, need some, I just need someone to help me here. I need a brother or sister that's not going to judge me. They're going to pray for me. If you've been through something, and it's strengthened your faith, and you can honestly say you're in this place, and you have great faith, I will ask you to come down to the front here for me. We don't need hundreds of thousands. We just need your people that really believe. I've got some faith now. Praise God. Do you think they got this faith because they've never been through anything? They have it because the Lord has allowed them to go through this. And I'm not, I'm, I, don't, don't fake it here. You see, I want you to have strong faith here. Is there anybody, now I'm, this may be one or two, and I, I don't want to embarrass anybody. Is there anybody? that you're going through a battle right now and you just, you, you know you're strong, but you just need a little help with your faith. That you just, you just, I just need a little help with my faith. I, I believe the Lord's my Savior. I'm not, I'm not going to quit. But I've been through this a long time. I faced this battle a long time and I just need someone that's got faith to help me that will pray the prayer of Jesus. I'm going to pray for your faith 
that have failed now. Would you raise your, if you're in that battle right now, would you just, we need someone over here. If you would raise your hand and say, I'm going through, I need someone with full of faith to come pray for me. Would you raise your hand right now? All those, if you're, if you're going through and you need someone to help pray for your faith. All you folks that are strong in faith, you see these hands, keep your hands raised up. I want you to find someone right now, and I want you to pray for some faith right now. Come on. Keep your hands up right now. I want everybody to be actively praying here. Come on. We got people on the other side as well. Come on. In Jesus' name right now. Come on. In Jesus' name. I want to see. Come on, speak faith right now in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on, faith right now in Jesus.
Submit to sorrow, our joy is coming in the morning. <laughs> 